Hello, everybody. Today, we're with... Antique model. Antique model. An antique model. <laughs> <laughs> nice, thank you. Yes, anytime. Hey, listen, I'm, uh, you know, you, I'm the pun master. You got to remember that. I know you miss my lack of Instagram now because now you don't get the memes like you used to. <laughs> yeah, but we'll, we'll still have them through uh, Facebook. We'll have them through Facebook. Gotta have the memes. I got it, yeah, especially the food ones. <laughs> Today, Antique's going to tell us about her modeling career. Uh, let's start off with how long totally have you been modeling? Uh, well, so I'm going to, I don't know, it's like, I don't want to give away my exact age. So if I tell people the exact number of years and then I say when I first started modeling, they're going to put two and two together. But anyway, um, almost a decade. Okay. Coming up on a decade. That's -ish. good. You probably, what, uh, what, uh, genre did you start out with first? So this is really funny. So um, I'm over 50 and it was interesting. I wanted to model back when I was in my 20s, way back in college and uh, was intimidated because back then, uh, you know, you had to move to New York City if you wanted to pursue modeling. And nowadays people can just, you know, make profiles on all these different digital platforms and just make content. So you can be anywhere uh, and be a model. But I started out with doing a TFP shoot that was themed. It was 1940s uh, film noir. And it was at this Victorian mansion that was about an hour and a half south drive from me. And they said, no experience necessary. This is for portfolio building. Just put together an outfit of the period and come on down. And I loved that. So put together a look, went down there. Um, so my first shoot ever was clothed and then the second shoot ever in my life and I was a complete noob like didn't even know posing techniques or anything like that it was a nude shoot um it was in December froze my ass off um, it was outdoors no no inside it was inside in the photographer's studio but it was one of those really big old uh brick warehouses with like 15 foot high you know ceilings and this huge wall of you know glass and everything <laughs> windows and we shot for a long time and it was only after i we got through like probably two-thirds of the shoot and my i swear to god my extremities were like blue i could barely feel my toes anymore he finally says to me oh are you cold i have a space heater <laughs> Dude, you know i've been freezing for hours now and you're just putting the heater on now um but so my my second shoot ever was nude and I guess for some people, they kind of have to come around to it. I know that a lot of art models that get into modeling uh, for photography start out as life models. So they, they pose nude for classes, uh, people who draw and paint and sketch. Um, I went straight into digital. It was my second shoot ever, but I've always felt very comfortable in my body. And I was more concerned that my lack of posing knowledge was going to, you know, give me away. Um, nice to say that I, I managed to model through it um you know i i held my own we got some good work and i was just kind of figuring things out on the fly in terms of posing but those are my first and second shoots ever yeah i was gonna ask like did, how long did you do um uh, like let's say as a, as an example commercial print or fashion before you went to figure work and you just jumped right in with both feet yeah no I, unfortunately so i've never done fashion because even when i was in my 20s um a, a a recruiter a model recruiter came to campus and i uh now i am dating myself this is before digital did not exist at the time so i had an 8 by 10 black and white print of myself it was a portrait it was a close-up portrait of me sitting in a field i was clothed so i took it to show the the uh, the recruiter and he looked at it and he said, yes, you definitely can do modeling, but basically I was too short for fashion. You have to be a minimum of 5'9", minimum of 5'9", if you want to do runway and get booked for fashion campaigns. But he told me that I could do uh, commercial and uh, print work. Um, but again, like back then, um, I was in upstate New York in a small college and I was scared of the city, so I didn't come down here and uh, ended up pursuing you know, uh, career, marriage, mortgage, family. And then um, after my stepdaughter turned 18 and I didn't have to be a helicopter parent anymore, um, it was time for me to do things that I was interested in. And I kind of went on meetup.com and found a bunch of different photography groups on there. And that's where I got started with the modeling. So. Can you tell me the story that you told me off camera some time ago about 
how the career ended? Oh. Do you okay, do you remember? Like, my my W two job. My, my <laughs> Your W two like, job. I thought yeah. that I thought that when that was that's that was basically the catalyst for you to do full time to modeling. do modeling full time, right? Yeah. So it was interesting. So I have a master's degree, long time white collar professional career. I was working for a small not for profit, um, and I started modeling and very quickly kind of fell into the nude modeling because that's what I was getting booked for. So I will never forget these words. My husband says to me, with respect to my job, he said, just don't screw this up because it's a paycheck, right? Got to have the money. And I was confident that they're never going to find out because I'm modeling evenings and weekends on my own time. How are they going to find out? So lesson about technology and apps. Okay. And there was a hard lesson for me to learn. I created a, uh, a Facebook modeling account and then I had an Instagram account for my modeling but I also had a personal Facebook account and I learned a very hard lesson never ever connect with business colleagues and co-workers um, in your personal Facebook personal is personal keep it completely separate from your work career I made the mistake of uh, accepting a uh, friend request from a couple of people that I worked with and so I had my personal Facebook my modeling Facebook and my modeling Instagram so I was at work admittedly posting during work hours, but my colleagues did too, right? Um, so I posted a censored art nude on my Instagram. And at the time, uh, it, you know, um, I checked, I, I had both my Facebook accounts open on my computer and they were separately logged in. So I had my personal and then my modeling. Instagram allows you to cross post. So I checked to make sure that it was going to the correct modeling Facebook account. Um, I hit cross post and I sat there monitoring the model account. 10 minutes later, and it, when the post had not shown up, and it's usually pretty instantaneous. I mean, it's, it's very quick. So 10 minutes, no post. I'm like, oh, fuck. I went and checked my, my personal Facebook. Here I am in all my glory, censored, <laughs> but you could still tell, bare ass naked, right? Mm -hmm. So I deleted the post and then I searched in Facebook. The post is not available anywhere else. And then I searched on Google. Thank God it didn't show anywhere else, right? But 10 minutes was, was enough time. Damage was done. It turns out that one of my coworkers was online at the same time. This person never liked me very much. Mm -hmm. She took a screenshot of the, the post, emailed it to our boss. This was on a Thursday afternoon. Friday afternoon, he calls me up to his office and I go inside and he says to me, I recent, I recently been made aware that you, you posted something on social media. And I'm like, Oh, fuck, worst <laughs> nightmare. Like now, what am I going to do? So we chatted a little bit and I said to him, am I in danger of losing my job? Pat, I'm going to use a bad word. That bastard le left me hanging for three days because it was President's Day weekend in February, right? So you, you know, we had Monday off and I had to wait until Tuesday to find out my fate because he says to me, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. Gee, thanks. So I come back to work on Tuesday. I had been in the process of leading um, a really big strategic meeting that was of great importance to our organization on a policy initiative. So he lets me conduct the conference call to, at noon to strategize this meeting with, you know, members of our board of directors on there, <laughs> really important people to our organization who are going to be participating in a meeting with someone very high up. Everything went fine. That was at noon. 3.30, my phone rings. He says to me, can you come upstairs? And I knew. I said, ah, oh, here it comes. Yep. So basically, I lost my job, went back downstairs, cleaned out my, my, my desk drawers and went home. And I made a decision. I sat there thinking, you know, I could immediately start applying for other jobs in my field. I knew how to do it. I knew where to go look for work. But I realized I had to be honest with myself. Like, I just wasn't happy with that industry anymore. And I decided, you know what? At the time, I was following a whole bunch of other models, all of which were posting that they did this full time. And I thought if they can do it full time and are making enough money to sustain themselves from the modeling, I can too. So... It's been a long time since I've had a, a brick and mortar job. Wow. <laughs> Tell me what is your favorite genre? Like what genre 
really lights up your imagination and really gets you into the mood where I got to, I really want to do this with this photographer. Or I really want to, or you see it, or you see an, a, a thing you want to try to recreate and put your own space, your own spin on it. So that's difficult actually, because there's a lot of genres. Um, I really love the fine art nude genre because I've just seen some amazing work with so many different people, uh, both, you know, photographers and models, a lot of people that I'm following, just amazing. Um, and that can be both studio work and, and what they call figure, uh, the nude in nature, when you're out in these amazing landscapes. Uh, people will go shoot in canyons and Utah and all these different places. But so that's that's wonderful. However, I think I really enjoy conceptual uh, projects where it's not traditional, you know, kind of ideas and posing. Um, those are always fun because you get to kind of experiment and also project yourself in ways that you don't you know, I don't often get a chance to do, but I love editorial fashion. Like I love just putting to, I have a huge wardrobe and I, I hardly ever get to show it off. I've got so many amazing things and I'm really detail oriented. Like I am just super almost anal retentive about details from head to toe. So it could be, you know, hat, the necklace I'm going to wear, the outfit itself, props, um, it all makes a difference and uh, that's why I'm so like particular about those things but I would I have so many ideas for like editorial um, fashion and editorial portraiture so uh, I would love to have an opportunity to do more of that okay yeah and Mark, Mark. for anybody any uh, aspiring models who might be watching this can you give a couple of tips on model safety yeah, vet, 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 can't say it enough. Um, number one, trust your gut when you are communicating with people and it doesn't matter the mode of communication. Uh, most people text these days. You do some also through email, but I think a lot of people do chatting either DMs through Instagram, uh, direct messages maybe through Facebook, and then of course texting. Just trust your gut because if you are getting vibes from, say, a, you know, a, a photographer and not everybody's a photographer, I have to be honest about that. Some people are just guys who are looking to use a photo shoot as an excuse to pretty much see a hot girl either naked or in skimpy lingerie. And that's their real objective. It's not art that they're shooting. Just trust your gut. If you're getting vibes like you know, maybe this guy is interested in more or really angling for more than just a photo shoot. You know, don't shoot with that person. You don't need to, you don't have to. And yes, I realize for some models it's a money thing, but you really do need to take a step back and think about, is it is the money that I'm gonna get from this worth my peace of mind and potentially my physical safety? Um, I don't personally think it is worth it. You, you wanna be safe. So trust your gut in terms of vibes that you're picking up. And then look through that person's port. Um, if they've got a Model Mayhem or a Purple port, port portfolio, look at who they've worked with. Try to see if you can identify faces of other traveling models that you may know. Um, a ton of us follow each other, so we get an idea of who's working with who. Um, see if they tag their models in their work. A big giveaway a lot of times for photographers who may be sketchy and don't have a great reputation is they don't want models checking their references. So if you see a bunch of models, including some that you recognize, but there's no credit naming those models anywhere, there's usually a reason for that. Um, so definitely reach out to the models independently for references. Don't even necessarily ask the photographer directly for references because of course they're gonna give you good references for themselves. You want to do like a random selection of people to reach out to and see what they say. Um, I also do want to I want to urge this confidentiality. It's really important for model safety that we kind of share our information freely amongst ourselves without being worried about repercussions. So if you get bad references back, please don't go running to the photographer and say, "I heard bad references about you. So and so said things something about you." It's like don't do that because you don't want to expose other models who may have been honest with you and given you their their honest review. You don't want them to get targeted for uh, harassment or retaliation by the photographer who is now going to be pissed off because someone out there is saying something about them that they don't like. Um, so we do try and honor that within the model circle. But just vet and always, always check references and trust your gut. Mm. Yeah. And also, um, can you 
explain the importance of not using your real name uh. in <laughs> doing this freelance work, especially if you're into the glamour and the... Uh, an art nude. And the art nude. Anything basically beyond fully... Even if you're fully clothed, I think it's always good. Yeah, so here's the thing. The vast majority of models that I know, including myself, we all use what's called a model alias. You come up and it's, it's akin to actors having a professional actor name. So uh, uh, an example of that, and not many people know this, the actor Tom Cruise, who is super, super famous, like everybody knows Tom Cruise. His real name is William Mapother. Yeah. Okay, I happened to run across that years ago and it always stuck in my head. So come up with a stage name for yourself and make sure that in any model release that you sign, there is language protecting the confidentiality of your given legal name and your personal information. You don't want to be doxxed. And the reason is, especially if you're doing nude or glamour work uh, in lingerie, I have I got fired because my my photographer oh, sorry my employer found out that I was doing nude modeling on my own time. That was um, that was an error of of using uh, technology. So basically, one app went to the other wrong app and posted on the wrong account. So it wasn't because they found out through my legal name. They just you know were found out. Mm -hmm. But with respect to legal name. Um, I know a woman down in the D.C. area who had a full-time job managing a retail store. She'd been there for, for, for several years. She was always open with her direct supervisor that she uh, modeled nude for art classes. So they knew of her modeling career. So her immediate supervisor at the job store uh, was fine with it. They were supportive and like, fine, it, this has nothing to do with your job. Somebody reported her to corporate. Oh, God. Yep. So, yep, to corporate. So once the corporate HR found out, it went up to whatever food chain it went up, and basically she she got fired. She lost her job over this because they they knew, uh, and it was because of the legal name. So there's also the problem, uh, and it is a big problem: stalkers and trolls. You're going to be out there on the internet. The photographers are going to be posting you on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. There's there's so many different social media platforms that they can be showcasing their work uh, of you on. God forbid you don't want your real name attached to these things because there are so many creepy men out there, I hate to say. And it is, I'm just, I'm generalizing, but it is mostly men. I've never heard to, yet still of a woman harassing a model over nude photos or glamour photos. It's always guys. If they if they have your legal name, they can research you on Google. They will find out your home address, your age, your date of birth, your phone number, possible email. Like they can find out stuff about you, especially where you live. Do you want that person kind of knowing where you live? No. So always use a model alias and just maintain an absolute firewall separation between any personal email, uh, Facebook accounts that you have and your, your model social media. Uh, try to maintain as strict a separation as you can because it's a, it's a safety issue. Yeah. That's great. That's some great information for the newbies out there. And I think we're going to end the interview there. Thank you very much for your time. We're going to go out and shoot your video portrait now for my Yay. tiny little YouTube channel. Um, all of your socials are going to be in the uh, description of the video when I post it. Cool. And thank you once again. It's good to work with you. Bye. Bye-bye.